Hello and welcome to my 2019 room and desk setup tour. I'll be taking you through the room and showing you everything that I've done so far. As you can tell, we have a pretty decent sized room here. It's on the third story of an apartment complex with about 12 foot ceilings, which I really like. Here's my TCL 55 inch TV. It's a Roku TV, so it's a smart TV. It has a uh, smart remote, Netflix and everything on there. A lot of people have this TV. It's pretty popular and I really like it. Here we have my standing mirror from Target. It's a great mirror, everyone needs one in their room. Makes the room look bigger, and I got my shoes stored underneath as well. Here we have my piano, which I play sometimes. It's a weighted key piano. It's a CDP100, and it also has a foot pedal, so it makes it a little bit more realistic, like a real piano. Now here we have my succulent collection. I'm definitely by no means an expert at taking care of succulents. I'm doing my best to make sure they don't die. These are some little cuttings that I got off the floor at Home Depot. Just the leaves that fall off, you can propagate them and uh, grow them into brand new, fresh succulents. But anyway, this guy probably needs a little bit more water. Uh, I'm working on it though, and I'm trying to get my green thumb. Also, I found when I moved into the apartment, the succulents weren't getting enough light, so I invested in a grow light. Now we're gonna go ahead and move over to the center of the room and see my bed. I got this bed off Amazon. I will link it in the description. I believe it was only $300. It's a really great price. And I like it because it's a memory foam bed, uh, which makes a massive difference when you're sleeping. It feels a lot better on your back than a spring mattress, in my opinion, as you can tell in my great demonstration here. And also that little blanket on the bed is from Target. Now here we have something a little bit more interesting. This is my leg stretcher machine, AKA extreme torture device. Well, Miles, why do you have an extreme torture device in your house? No, don't worry, I'm not torturing anybody, except for myself. All it does is stretch your legs out and gets you a really good stretch. I want to be able to do the full splits, and as you can tell, I'm not that close, so i got to use the machine some more. Now we will move over from the extreme torture device to the bedside table. Over here on the bedside table, I have some coasters and my watch, and most importantly, my EDC tray, which is really nice because uh, I can throw anything in there like watches, phones, pens and pencils, things like that. I also have another board up here where I hang my other watches, necklace and other glasses and sunglasses. And also have my key hook here which saves me from losing my keys which I definitely would do without that. So that's very important for me. Okay next up we have my hanging shelves. I have two hanging shelves, one here and one over by my desk. Here I have mounted on there my 50mm young Mill lens and a Stella Artois glass I got for Christmas. Here's the other one that's by my desk where I have my Canon 60D sitting. It's not really being used right now. And my two little Japanese hand-painted monsters. And the legend has it that if you keep them together, they will bring you good luck. Here's yet another attempt for me to be organized. And it's just a whiteboard that I write stuff down that I have to do. Okay, now we're going to take a venture on into the very exciting bathroom. Not really anything too special here. Here's a little look at what I have inside of my mirror cabinet. Nothing too much. I try not to keep this too cluttered and just keep the essentials that I'll actually need and use. Now we can take a look at what's underneath the sink. And I just have a organizer to keep my cleaning supplies together so I can easily get them out. So if I actually ever get the motivation to clean, then everything's ready to go and I won't lose that motivation. Here's my white shower curtain. I try to keep everything in the house as white and neutral as possible just because I like the aesthetic of it. And here's the inside of my bathtub, which is fairly organized, I would say. Not too bad for a guy. And pretty clean bathtub. Not too bad. Okay, now we move on to something that everyone's been excited for, the toilet. But it actually does have something kind of exciting as a Lux Bidget attached to it, which is basically just a little device that makes the toilet into a bidet. And at the expense of getting my camera all wet, I will now demonstrate to you how it works. Yep, it does pretty much exactly what you would expect it to, and it also feels that way as well. Other than being kind of weird, it actually is a good way to save on toilet paper and save some money, as well as help the environment. Anyway, here's my storage closet. Yes, I have food in here. I don't really know if that's a good idea to keep it in the bathroom, but I'm doing it anyway. Yes, I have a lot of beans. You never know when there's going to be an apocalyptic disaster, and you need to survive off of purely beans for a few weeks. But if that does happen, I have the beans here, ready to go. Now we're going to take a trip over to the other side of my room and take a look at the closet. So here we have a pretty large walk-in closet with mostly storage and clothing items. 
Uh, I like to hang up all my clothes because I really hate folding. I also bought a bunch of S hooks off Amazon so I could hang up my backpacks and hats. Down here I have a little storage container I got from Amazon. I keep my work clothes and the clothes that are on the go. Also my laundry basket's there but it's in the wash right now. And then if you come over to the left side of my closet I have the standard unicycle as everyone does. Up here I have my kind of self-made storage system. It's a bunch of clear shoe boxes and slightly larger boxes that I labeled and sorted all of my things into categories so that if I actually need something, I can find it. Here I have some sorted categories, audio, media, cable and extensions, crafts, glues and stickers, camera, phones, power bank, chargers, iPods and batteries, things like that. Different categorizations. And then for the things that I couldn't hang up, I sorted them into these boxes. So I have shorts, socks, underwear, belts and things like that just so I don't have to hang anything up. And my solution for reaching those boxes that are a little bit higher up in my storage archive, just got this little step ladder so I can grab things easily. All right, now it's time for the most exciting part of the tour would be my desk setup. I got the desk for free from my mom. She didn't want it anymore. That's where I got the desk and the chair. It's just a cheap one off Amazon. I can't even remember how much it costs. I got it a while ago. It has lumbar support and that's all I really cared about. Now here we have my blue snowball microphone. It's not really blue, but it's a pretty good plug and play microphone. I have it on a articulating arm here with a pop filter and you know, it gets the job done and it's a good mic. For my mouse, I have my most recent and welcome update. It's the Logitech G900. Finally have a wireless gaming mouse. I was using the Razer Death Adder before this, and I can say that this is a really good upgrade if you have the money to spend. It has a lot of extra keys on the side of the mouse that you can bind to commands for editing or gaming, and just an overall great mouse that's very light. My next essential item that I have on my desk is a cool desk fan. It's a Vornado, I got it from Target. It's just a really great item to have on your desk because it gets really hot here in Florida and I would be sweating without this boy. Plus it's got variable speeds, so that's also nice. Here's my Red Dragon keyboard that I've had forever. It's a red backlit keyboard and it's mechanical. It doesn't have a number pad, which is unfortunate, but it's still a really great keyboard as long as you're willing to deal with extremely loud keys. It is really loud, but it's only $40. This is my three monitor setup. I don't really think that you actually need to have three monitors, two is enough, but it's nice to have an extra one to watch tutorial videos on this one here. This was the one I had originally from my setup, and then I finally have my 144Hz Asus monitor, which is actually a good monitor for gaming. Here's a few more miscellaneous items, a card reader, phone charger, a cup holder that stores screwdrivers and pens, stuff like that, things I might need on the go. Then I have an extra storage box with a junk drawer and camera drawer down here. I guess I can't really avoid showing you this. My cable management is not the best, so we'll skip over it and go right to my computer. Here we are with my pride and joy. This computer's been with me for about six years. At least this case has. It's a weird brand. I haven't really even heard of it. I just wanted one with a screen on the side. It's a full-size tower, and this computer has gone through a few changes. It started out as an AMD, and now it is an Intel. The processor is an i7-7700K. I have a GTX 1080. FTW edition graphics card with 8 gigs of VRAM, a 500 watt EVGA power supply which gets the job done nicely, and a very poorly put together hard drive and SSD slot. I also have a Strix motherboard and 12 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 RAM. Now this really is my dream computer because it does absolutely everything that I want it to do, video editing and plays games. I'll show you the view here as well which is pretty cool, you're on the third story so you're high up, you're with the trees, feel like you're with nature, except for the neighbor can see right in. Now here we have the final item or organization in my room and that's my IKEA pegboard. In this pouch I keep my phone so that I can use it as an extra alarm so I can make sure I wake up in the morning. I have my TV remote here so I don't misplace it. Up on the right side here I have memory card storage extra power banks, and then this is where my batteries will go for my cameras, except for I'm using them right now. Also have some Teotronics headphones, wireless headphones here, and my EOS 800D, which is the exact same as the American T7i. The 800D is just a European version, and it's the exact same camera. The only actual difference is the name and about $200 in price. Here I have some hooks for storing tripods and charging cables, and this is my makeshift invention that I attach to the pegboard with Velcro cable ties. I can charge everything that I need to just by flicking one switch and that includes USBs, my GoPro, and also both my Canon camera batteries. Here I am flipping the switch and you can see everything light up and start charging, which is pretty awesome. I also have these shelves built into the pegboard so that when I'm charging things, they have a place to sit. 
I'm sure you noticed that Android phone set up here and it's connected to my security camera so I can see just in case someone wants to run in and steal a bottle of vodka, they won't get away with it. At least I'll have them on camera. I also feel like this is a really good idea for situational awareness because most of the time when you're deep into a game, you're not going to be paying attention to your surroundings and it's good to have a live feed of what's going on in the kitchen. As for this pegboard, I do really like it. I don't think you have to get the one from Ikea. I like that it's white, but it is more expensive. You can get one for much cheaper off of Amazon, and that means that all regular pegboard attachments will work on it. So if I had to choose again, I probably would just get one from Amazon, but this one does look very nice. Okay, and that wraps it up for my 2019 room tour. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the items that I showed in the video. I'll make sure to do my best to link as many as I can. Also, let me know if you like this kind of video. If you did, remember to like if you want to and subscribe if you feel like it. Thanks for watching.